Good afternoon, folks, and thanks for joining us here with the European, uh, I mean, the FX Daily Roundup. We have seen some changes here. Uh, the euro has gone and rebounded from its lows. Now, we potentially we're looking for a low down here to 854. Uh, excuse my voice, battling a pretty severe cold uh, at 854. But we actually got things turned around a little bit here. We have rally back in here. We had our bias chart. I think we had a bias chart resistance here for 947. Let's take a look here. One moment. I missed most of the action this morning, uh, stuck in bed. So um, we we had uh, we actually had 950, 950. So we've come up, we kind of just paired back a bit before we got there. Uh, we did see some news come out on um, Brexit here about the Irish backstop. Uh, bear with me. <coughs> oh, hold on, I'm sorry about that. Apologize. Uh, <coughs> Doggone. So it says the EU reportedly prepared to consider a time limit on the Irish, Irish Brexit backstop. Uh, we did see a rally, but we had our bias chart resistance here at 2346, which I think is the same bias chart resistance we had since yesterday, um, if I remember correctly. Um, so we came up short of that. Um, and we're kind of pairing back and some people are a bit surprised again, if that's the case and we should move higher. But um, then I saw uh, another uh, tidbit from, I think it was uh, Forks Live it says from the report, Johnson's refusal to accept the idea of the backstop suggests that the EU concession won't come into play, but it could do if the UK softens its stance, the people say. So probably why you're seeing this back and forth move here. Now we are starting to see the dollar cad finally break a little bit lower here. Uh, we actually had our bias chart resistance um, at 3288, which was the same as yesterday. And we rallied up to, I think it's 3290. Once again, I missed all this stuff. There's, Luck would have it. But anyway, we rallied up to 3290 and then we've turned around, and moved lower. Uh, this has been our old support here, this 3224, but the support we're looking at actually is 32. If we can get a daily close below 32, it really opens the door for us to go and move down to 31. We've been trapped in this range. Uh, but uh, yeah, that 3288 kept this market here in check. Uh, we've actually had the old old zones from, from the prior week. Um, Australian dollar after the RBA, well, they're still open to cut, so we did go and roll lower, and we're just not, we're seeing a, 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 a little bit of a, I'm going to call it a bounce, just a stabilization move a little bit off those lows, but probably has a lot more to do with the dollar index uh, coming back in in place. The bigger significant move really is on this uh, dollar yen. Um, we had been, you know, seeing this market push higher and higher and higher. I think this morning we had our bias chart resistance at, at 837, and even then, when we did the 837, the dollar yen was already above it. But I said, okay, we'll just go with the level. 837, you can see it right there coming in, just right there. You can see it a little bit clearer when it's on the two hour. Actually, on the daily, I mean, apologize to say. But we put it for 837. And then, of course, with uh, the data that came out this morning, 10 a.m. East, it really sunk the dollar and really sent this moving lower. More importantly, though, is if you go into the daily, uh, let me take a look at this for a moment. This is very key. If we close below 776, really put, let's show you this. It's important because it would take out one, two, three, four. That would take out that 76, you see? So if you get a daily close below 776, you've taken out the closes for the last four days. That's a pretty good sizable reversal. Even if it doesn't push any further lower, I mean, just closing below that will be a pretty good little reversal right there in the dollar yen. Um, let's go and take a look here. Also, we've seen gold rebound. We talked about gold yesterday. Let's go and move into that. So we talked about the gold market, you know, where it dipped yesterday and coming down here to this 23%. And we talked about, we thought that we could get a um, uh, a bit of a rebound from there. Now, we actually went lower as we were coming in early into the European session. We actually went below even this 23%, which we had not quite hit it yesterday. 
And then now things with the dollar pairing back and really interest rates, you can see, you know, 10 years coming up have really turned things around. We've rallied essentially a little over $20. Uh, actually, to the, you know, if you look at the bottom, really $25. Now, um, and actually put us in a situation where we're almost rallied 38% of the most recent range. So we're probably right there at that point. And um, so you may see the gold market kind of ease back a bit. Uh, the dollar itself has found a little bit of support. We'll take a look at that here in one moment on a very short-term basis. So you can see here with the cash dollar index coming in right in here, a little bit of a support level. So we bounced a little bit from that. The euro's only come off just a little bit from its highs, okay? And um, But you can see gold. Let's go and take a look here at the gold. Well, you can see here, they're just about made up to the 38%, just about almost nicked it to the, to the T almost. And we were looking for a bit of a rebound. I talked to you, I mean, I picked up some yesterday and um, taken a little bit off and I got stopped at break even. Like I said, I spent most of the time in bed. So I've missed all, I've missed all the fireworks basically. Everybody, I'm glad everybody, a lot of people in the chat room have done exceptionally well. I'm very, very happy for them. Hey, you can't, Fantastic. Uh, had some good good trades. Blake with the Dallas Whiskey and other pairs. And, of course, Manda with the Yen pairs and uh, Amir with the Euro. A lot of great trades. And DK Trader also and um, uh, C-Notes. Um, Chi was in there. So some great trades. Um, one thing we're looking at also today is I finally got tired of sleeping in. It's here with the, with the, uh, uh, the crude oil market. And if we go and move into that. Let's take a look here. We've made a pretty good run down here. Right there at 53.28 is the uh, 78%. Uh, the only thing that's been disappointed is it still hasn't bounced, but my thoughts are if we can get past, if we can take out uh, the 53 handle, which we might can see that if the spoos take another dip lower, that might allow a decent pounce back, maybe about 60, 75 pips, I would, ticks, I would think. But we haven't seen that yet. Um, here's the spoos, and they're still hanging here towards the slows. I'm looking for a move down here to about 29.42, which is really where we went. But 42 would just barely take out those lows, and then maybe we can rebound. But that might be enough to scare the crudo to make one more dip. I mean, you think about it. Look how much this thing has fallen. And we're still not seeing like a huge rally out for the 78%. So if you bought it here, you're thinking, what the heck? I'm only up only a little bit and spoos might even slip a little bit further. So maybe if we can get that break of 53, um, and I think there's a little bit of additional support there, 5280, um, that might be a good area to step in if, you, if you're, um, you know, looking to get long on crude. I think that'd be a, a very good area of the 50. You have confluence of the FIB. At 53, 28, you have the level at 52.99. Take that out a little bit, and probably should flush out quite a few people. Uh, maybe anybody that's trying to step in and buy this thing all the way down. Um, let's take a look here. We'll just take a quick look at the uh, cross rates. Uh, also, yen broke low, and we're not turning it around here at all whatsoever. And we've seen, seen the guppy take a pretty good little sizable dip here. Obviously, with the strength of the yen, uh, as we've seen these equities come off and kind of flip things around, uh, the only thing that the euro is really making any headway with has been the Aussie dollar here. And it's continued to go in advance here. Um, we'll see whether or not the, the euro can keep its bid up, It'll go to the main page again. Uh, I was looking, if we took a dip down that 854, I was working for a limit just below that pair, below that level. But as I mentioned, I spent most of the thing, um, you know, uh, getting a lot of, a lot of rest. Um, but anyway, that being said, but we have seen the dollar peso come up to right where we're looking at. We said 1982, and that's exactly where they went to. 1982, our bias chart resistance, we were looking for the market 
Um, if you see our basic technical analysis, I do that during the Asian session. I'm doing it daily now. And we're looking for a pause at 1982. And we've got a pause there. We've paired back to what, 1976. But I'm looking for a pause here at 1982. A uh, good area to pick this up is going to be 1954 with additional support at 1947. Uh, but we're still staying pretty strong. And dollar cat is still pressing lower here. We'll see if the dollar index um, can pair back any further. Uh, we've had this stretch, and now uh, Blake's been saying this for a while. I mentioned on the face was that uh, we may be in store for some weakening employment data, and if that's the case, maybe we can see this dollar index finally, you know, uh, at least on a short-term basis, top out and see, you know, pull back. That pullback, at least from the outset, should take us at least to 98.58. So you're looking for another 50 ticks, but really we the realistic pullback would be right here at 98.14. You're talking about another 100, 100 ticks. I guess you're going to try and translate that to the euro. Uh, be looking right around 10.50-ish around there. So a challenge of right there. You see there 10.26. That'd be almost 100 pips, but maybe push up a little bit higher, about 10.44. So uh, we'll see whether that comes to fruition, but certainly this is the opportunity for the dollar to go and get – a pair back at this point. Uh, that's all we have for today. And um, good luck with the rest of the day trading. And thanks for joining us here on the FX Daily Roundup. Oh, by the way, they have extended the uh, package to sign up for Forex Analytics. And um, that's been extended actually through tomorrow. So you can buy one month and get the next month free. Or if you go with the six month uh, semi annual, you get a 25%. Uh, uh, savings and with an annual it'll be a 35% savings. So definitely want to go and take a, take advantage of that opportunity. Like I said, with the varying disciplines of macro and uh, harmonics and um, Elliott wave um, as well as, well as basic technical, but also in the chat room, uh, a lot of varied uh, uh, strategies and uh, you know, traders and very, all very helpful uh, in sharing their information. So, uh, definitely want to go in and consider that uh, at the very least try the one, one month by, by get one month free by one month get one month free and once again thanks for joining us here on uh, the FX Daily Roundup with Forex Analytics.